Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass. Thank you for watching this Ag Forecast, brought to you by Agribull, the makers of Morning Farm Report. Our software gives scores the insights to make the best decisions possible about their operations. Well, let's start here. I'm releasing this video here on December 21st, which is the winter solstice. And the winter solstice is a very interesting day uh, in terms of Earth's orbit around the sun. On this particular day, the sun's rays are perpendicular uh, to the Tropic of Capricorn, 23 and a half degrees south of the equator. Uh, for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, which is where most of my viewers are, this is the shortest day of the year in terms of daylight hours. The sun strikes at a very low angle on the sky, and as a consequence, well, we're in our coldest season. But this day marks the beginning of winter. Now, I'm going to take you up here uh, pretty far north uh, north in the northerly latitudes. You're not going to quite get past the Arctic Circle, but we're going to get close to it in just a few moments. By the way, if you did live on the North Pole, uh, this is a very interesting day because this would mark three months since the last time that you saw the sun, uh, and it's going to be three more months till the sun comes back up again on the North Pole. But let's go right here, very close to the Arctic Circle in Fairbanks. This is a video I love to show my students. This is what it looks like to see the sun rise and eventually set on December 21st in, in Fairbanks. Now it's 64.8 degrees north, so we're very close to the Arctic Circle, but notice how you know, low above the sky the sun actually gets. It's incredible to see that. And because it makes such a, a, a very low pass here, it just takes a few hours to, to rise and then set. So they spend almost the entire day uh, with without seeing much of the sun. And like you can see here, when it does come up, it's so low of an angle, it really doesn't heat anything up. And that's why these far northerly latitudes have such incredibly uh, cold winters. And you can see it's already starting to set and it's on its way back down. Now, let me go just north of the Arctic Circle and take you right into the middle of summer. So while winter days are very short and sun angles are very, very low, this is what it's like to be uh, north of the Arctic Circle in the middle of summer. Now you see the sun looks like it's gonna set, right? But because of the tilt of the Earth on its axis, it never does. It just comes right back up like that. And it's 24 hours of sunshine for some folks uh, that live north of the Arctic Circle for certain times throughout the year. And so that is just some cool stuff about our planet when, you, when it comes to watching how uh, the Earth interacts with the sun. Okay, thought I'd give you a little uh, lesson on that here on, on the winter solstice, the beginning of winter. Okay, let's get to the, the bigger picture here about the weather. Now, this is a map that was released a week ago. We're going to get a brand new update of this later in the day on Thursday. But it shows you the current drought situation across the country. And we've been talking about our concern about the growing drought that's kind of south uh, and west of the primary corn belt. We know we have some residual drought from last uh, summer here in parts of Montana and the Dakotas, but it's this drought we've been watching develop. Now, since this map was released, this much precipitation has fallen in a lot of that area. We've had this, this very active um, kind of strong uh, upper level feature here that's this basically been bringing a lot of moisture, this trough that's been bringing a lot of moisture into this area. Uh, and this is fantastic. We like to see this. Yes, they've been dealing with some flooding in this area, but bigger picture, this is returning a lot of moisture to the soil. Now, right now, uh, you know, getting early into the early morning uh, of here of December 21st, we're watching some light snow spread across uh, the very northern part of the Corn Belt. We do have some winter storm warnings there because the winds are picking up and we're expecting, you know, three to five inches of snow out of this system that's moving right through here. So early day on the Thursday, the, the concern is in the northern Corn Belt. But as we get into this longer range forecast, I want to address something very quickly with you. You see, when we when we do our prediction uh, of the weather, we rely on, on computer models. That's, that's really the mainstay of how we do our long range projections and our short range projections. And I want to show you something important here. Each dot that you see on this map is a location where we launch a weather balloon. And weather balloons are the only mechanism by which we measure kind of this vertical transect of all the different weather variables through the atmosphere. One of our biggest limitations in forecasting the weather, especially in the United States, is that we don't launch weather balloons in the Pacific Ocean, nor do we launch them in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. We don't have a ton of them here over Canada either. And even the, the distribution across the United States is not that great. And so in addition to us having a resolution problem with our models, we also have what we call an initial conditions uh, problem. And why I bring all this up is because we saw some pretty major shifts in the overall flow of the jet stream uh, producing this next low pressure system coming out on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. So let's dig right on into that. The animation here shows you the uh, late afternoon model run on, uh, on Wednesday and its projections of the flow of the jet stream all the way through the 30th. And I just want to show you some of the big features we're watching. You see, we've been discussing the position of this trough. And as this trough kind of came out of the four corners, we knew that it was going to help develop 
develop a low pressure center somewhere in the Great Plains. At least that's what we were talking about on Sunday. But something interesting has happened, and this trough is kind of flattened out. Uh, it's lost kind of uh, its amplitude. It's getting absorbed into the overall flow. And as a consequence, it just didn't have the same kind of strength to provide the strong upper level divergence, that upper level support to kick off a big system. So instead, this next wave coming through is too broad, it's too weak, and it looks like it's only going to be producing snow in the eastern third of the country. And that's a big shift over what I talked about three days ago. But I do want to mention this. When we get out past uh, uh, that system, getting into here the, the Christmas Eve, we have a huge trough that is just well established north of the Great Lakes. And this is what's going to bring in some extremely cold air, you know, at least from what we've seen so far this year, uh, night before Christmas, Christmas Day, and the day after. But it's not going to stick around too long. And that's because there's a little wave that came here out of the Gulf of Alaska, really the Bering Sea, that crossed over this little uh, feature here and came into the West Coast. And here it is on the 26th. Now, why this is important is because if the models have a good handle on this, that trough digs south here, and it looks quite impressive at this point. Now, what does that mean? Well, if that trough digs, look at the ridge that builds over the eastern half of the country. This will be a huge surge of warmth. You know, uh, four days ago, I was talking about how this cold air had some staying power, I thought, till the end of the year. And it turns out it's going to come in cold around Christmas, and then we're going to get a warm-up right after that because of this deep trough that's digging here out west. But if the models have got this right, and that's a pretty big if, as you now know, this could produce a major, major cyclone for the end here of our um, uh, uh, 2017, and that's the thing we got to be on the lookout for. So let's see what the consequences are. Here we're going to animate the next 10 days in six hour increments, and boy, there's the monster right there. But let me show you what happened first to that system I was so concerned about. Remember last time it had formed up here in Nebraska, swung down here into parts of Kansas, and took off for Chicago? Well, look at the new way this thing is coming in so weak and so pathetic because that trough flattened out. We lost our strong upper level support. Looks like it's going to try to kick off a load that's going to go right over Champaign-Urbana. And then as it does so, what we see is that it's going to be pulling in some moisture, but maybe some snow for the Ohio River Valley. Uh, so I'm, I'm on the lookout for parts of Indiana and Ohio on the backside of this. They may be getting quite a bit of snow. But remember, a few days ago, we were projecting parts of uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, getting five to eight inches of snow, and the system just totally took a change on us here. But as I mentioned, let me show you the, the, the big one coming through here. So this is, uh, by the way, this is Christmas Day. So thankfully, nothing crazy at this point for Christmas Day. Some lake effect snow, some windy conditions, but uh, certainly some really, really cold air coming out of this big 1032 high. But if we see this, this is getting us out to the 27th. Here we are on the 28th. I'm worried about a big freezing rain event pot uh, potentially on the 27th, I'm sorry. And then here comes that system. And if it comes through looking anything like this, this is a monstrous system. And it's going to be dumping a lot of snow, bringing in really windy conditions. But here's the thing. Is this just the GFS being the GFS? Or are we actually looking at a real system that's going to come in here? And I'm going to be honest with you, at this stage, I just don't know. Uh, trying to look at all the different models and kind of compare them, we're getting a lot of different results. So we're just going to have to keep a close eye on it. That's what we do during this time of year in, in winter. Now, I want to show you this, but I'm going to pause it right here. This gets us through 12 p.m. on Monday, so Christmas, showing you the total snow accumulation by the GFS model. So this is kind of where we're getting a, what I'll call a fresh white Christmas. Now, here's that snow coming through parts of the Ohio River Valley on that first system. So it looks like a lot of folks from Indiana through Ohio have pretty good chances. And then, of course, as you get up in the Northeast, big time snows. We do have a little bit of snow still planning to come through parts of Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. But this is a few inches. This is not, you know, seven inches like we saw earlier. So uh, this is it. This is kind of your, your, your current white Christmas forecast. But watch as I can continue to play this. Look at how excited the GFS gets, whoa, right there with that next big system. Again, a ton of uncertainty with this, but I at least want to bring all this to your attention. Uh, I'm expecting the jet stream to stay quite active uh, over the next uh, long, long time period. So we're just going to have to watch this day by day as it moves on. Just to show you what the European models forecasting by 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. on uh, on Christmas Day, uh, you can see the snow in parts of the Ohio River Valley a little different. Got more snow coming across Illinois, but certainly the big time snows here for the Northeast. So a little bit different picture, but not not terribly different in the overall structure of where we're expecting to get snow out of this. So uh, a lot to be looking at here. 
Now, this is what Christmas uh, Day high temperatures look like. So I want to make sure that you see my color bar here. Uh, this color right in here going through Chicago, going back over to Iowa, getting back up in the Dakotas and parts of Nebraska, that is about the uh, 15 to 16 degree Fahrenheit mark. And the colors that you see up here in parts of Minnesota, North Dakota, northern Wisconsin, that is below zero. And I told you it's going to come in cold. This is the uh, minimum temperatures on Christmas. You can see that those um, you know, mid-teens come all the way down into parts of Indiana, Ohio, into Missouri. This is some pretty chilly air. And then parts of northern Iowa, the Dakotas, and, and Minnesota, and Wisconsin, we're going to be talking below zero temperatures. But it doesn't last long. we got another big surge of warm air coming on that next system following this. Again, I thought it had some staying power, but it didn't, and I, I was wrong there. Now let's quickly turn our attention to South America. The map in the background and the map also in the foreground shows you the last 30 days of precipitation expressed as a percent of normal. So look, you can see the drier conditions here in the center part of the United States and really dry conditions in the Four Corners area. But look at South America. We kind of blow that up. We can see that much of South America's main growing regions, as we've been talking about, have been relatively wet. We've also been mentioning how the southern growing regions, Uruguay, parts of Paraguay, and then parts of Argentina have been dry. But we have seen recently a lot of rain move back through this area, helping relieve some of that drought. And the longer range forecast, well, this gets us through the 30th here. This is from the European model. I think it's got a better handle on this than the current GFS forecast. But look, we are seeing much drier than normal conditions right in through here. So Mato Grosso is in this area. But look at this, this drier pocket because they're setting up the South American Convergence Zone to really go racing through parts of Paraguay, uh, parts of Mato Grosso do Sol, parts of Parna, which is this these main growing regions in through here. But look at this. Look how dry Argentina is expected to stay. So, you know, we just released those longer range model outlooks in our last video saying that this area here was going to be dry. We're watching out for dryness in Argentina as we get January through March. We're going to kind of get an early taste of that, at least looks like over the next 10 days uh, in South America. So uh, just some stuff to be on the lookout for. But I, I want to tell you this right now, uh, because because things recently have been getting a pretty good rainfall, there's not a whole lot of uh, news coming out of South America saying, hey, major stress, we're on the lookout. Uh, it, it's going to have to be um, watching that, that January to March time period to really see how things unfold uh, in South America. So we'll be keeping an eye on it, keep you updated every single week. So hope you tune back in uh, uh, by the time we get into uh, to Christmas Day. I've got a, a brand new video coming out for you early in the morning on Christmas morning. So um, that's my present to you, a, a fun video about the weather on Christmas Day. I hope you all have a fantastic uh, Christmas this year and a very safe one. And uh, be careful if you're traveling uh, this year. So with that, I'll go ahead and wrap this up. We hope you look forward to Agrible's next ag forecast coming out on Monday. To get morning farm report for your operations, complete with a daily email that shows you a snapshot of your field conditions each morning, go to morningfarmreport.com. Sign up for that free account. Full grower accounts are free if you sign up for a sustainable yield program or for growers who work with 80 merchandisers. Look forward to talking again on Christmas.